Welcome to Inside Kern. I'm your host, Katie Price. Inside Kern's goal is to humanize county government and give you an idea of the types of services your taxes provide. This episode, you'll get a look at the Meals on Wheels program and see how it impacts one couple's daily life. You'll find out what the roads department really does and then ride shotgun with the sheriff's gang suppression unit. But first, what happens to a child who's been abused by her parents? Where does she go to get help? Who cares for this child? Kern County's Department of Human Services provides assistance for these children who oftentimes can't help themselves. Their foster care program handles approximately 3,000 children with about 500 of the most caring and giving people, foster care parents. What's it like to be a foster parent? How important is it to the kids? And what exactly do the parents get out of it? In this segment, you'll meet a unique family, one with a giving heart and caring soul. You'll meet the Gibsons. Look right over here, okay? Everybody look at me. I'll, I'll mouth it with you, you ready? One, two, three. Hi, we're the Gibson family. You're the one that's so fast. Beautiful. <laughs> to be a good foster parent, you have to have an open, big heart. You have to definitely have an open mind because these children come in, they're fragmented, they're, they're broke. A lot of times these kids have been through so much trauma that, um, and to, to watch them come in as a broken little child and then just being with you for like a month, you see such a difference in that child. And to me, that makes me feel good to know that I've done my part, you know, that I've given them a, a safe, loving home. They feel secure. And I think that's important. Are you there? Well, usually whenever we, we meet people on the street, people always ask us if the boys are our grandkids. And because we're older, and they're, they're younger. And I tell them, no, that these are our children. We went into foster care about 10 years ago, and then I start telling them about some of my kids and some of their successes. And we have had uh, probably over 100 kids in our home throughout the years, and we've kept up with a lot of them. And that makes people want to help with the kids. And then I let them know also, that you know we're in desperate need of more homes. We've got so many kids in foster care right now that um, we we just desperately need more homes. Bobby was our very first placement. He came to us at the age of five months. And um, we adopted him first. And then Nikki came, what, about two weeks later? We got Nikki. And he was two at the time. And um, I, we, uh, actually his mom worked really hard and got him back. It took her two years, but she tried really hard and she got him back. But um, things just didn't work out. And so the county picked him back up after four months and brought him back to us. And then after that, we adopted him too. My, both my boys were drug exposed as infants um, in utero. So it's caused some problems for them. Bob is ADHD, Nick is ADD. And that's directly drug related. But, you know, we go to Kern County Mental Health, wonderful program. They help us. Before the boys were put on uh, medication or they were diagnosed, they were below grade, grade level, just couldn't survive in school. We got them into mental health, got the services for them. They're both up above grade level now. Can we have chickens? When they come into a foster home, they come into a family and then they become a part of that family. And anybody thrives in with a, a family. You know, you learn values. You learn, um, you know, how to behave and, um, and how to survive in life. 
Well, there's a lot of different rewards. Uh, just the interaction with the boys. You're able to participate in uh, some of the sports and to be able to watch them go to school and do some of their programs. Well, I think I get as much from the kids as they get from me. Uh, I enjoy what we're doing. I think it's because we know that we've made a difference in their life. I look at my little boys and I just, you know, I think, where would you be today if you weren't with us? What would you be doing if you weren't with us? I just hope that they grow up and they're successful and they can do whatever they want to do. If they want to be a fireman, let them be a fireman. If they want to be a rock star, let them be a rock star. As long as they're happy and they can make a living and they can survive, that's good for me. I think the foster care program uh, is very important for the kids. If it wasn't here, they'd just fall through the cracks. They, the support wouldn't be here for them. To be a foster parent is one of the greatest joys in life for us um, because I think, um, like Tom said, we get as much from the kids as the kids get from us. And it's well worth it. If you suspect child abuse, call the Child Abuse Hotline at 631-6011. Or if you have questions about foster parenting, dial 631-6204. Kern County has over 3,000 miles of road that it maintains. If you put all those roads together, you could travel from Bakersfield to Miami, Florida. It's a daunting task to keep those roads repaired and functional. So how's it done and what's it really like on the road? My particular position is as a supervisor, I've got 500 and 550 miles of uh, county roadway that we supervise, and uh, or that I'm in, uh, in charge of as far as uh, maintaining. And that, can, that involves the shoulders, the culverts, uh, drainage, residential areas. You can see now we're out in a mountainous area, and this is Round Mountain Road, which is frequented with uh, heavy oil flow traffic and uh, cattle ranchers and recreation use as bi bicycle riders, so it's uh, in demand for uh, to be kept, kept up pretty regularly. Well, right here what we're doing is a cold asphalt overlay. And uh, over the winter, they take a pretty good beating. Uh, we spent about three days last week filling in some of the ruts and uh, the base failures, which is due to heavy traffic and uh, hopefully we can get a couple of years of, of wear on this before we have to come out and do anything with it again. There's a need for uh, safety on the roads and the shoulders and, and keeping the drains open and, and uh, dealing with, with things as, as they happen. You know, people don't realize that the roads need to be in a safe manner in order for people to, to maneuver through them. department for 30 years. It started as a college summer job that uh, turned into a uh, lifetime career here. I was uh, going to school at Bakersfield College and uh, started working here as a summer job and one thing led to another and uh, it's turned into 30 years worth of uh, service.
Yeah, I usually handle my uh, my complaints on a 24 hour, within 24 hours, depending on uh, if it's an emergency type situation going back. Uh, it's something that I I'll try to get to within within hours. Well, we're trying to keep these roads safe for them to drive on, to get to and from where they need to, without having to uh, divert to driving off off the road and shoulder shoulders and uh, just basically keeping the road safe for for public use and the shoulders and cleaned and everything else involved, drains. So it ties into quite a bit of uh, work on a, on a regular basis. If you'd like to see traffic counts for various roads in Kern County, you can visit the County Roads Department website at www.co.kern.ca.us backslash roads. Older adults in Kern County face many challenges, from the rise in grocery prices and utilities to a changing world of computers and cell phones. Oftentimes, they're a forgotten part of our community, living in homes and seldom getting out. Fortunately, Kern County's Aging and Adult Services Department is there to help them and to provide needed services throughout the entire county. One of these services is Meals on Wheels. It's a program that provides a third of the daily intake for its clients. Here's how one department helps keep the wheels rolling and the food flowing. Meals on Wheels is a uh, federally funded and state funded program run through the California Department of Aging. Um, it started with the Older America Act. Uh, what it does is provide senior nutrition for um, either homebound or congregate seniors. Um, we currently have 12 sites in the county that are run by the county. There are other sites that are run by other providers in the county of Kern. Um, funding comes from the federal and state level, um, as well as donations that seniors make in the program. Me, myself, I deliver here in Kern City, and then on the afternoon route, I deliver um, out more out west and to Brookside and farther over like White Lane and Buena Vista Road way out there. Meals on Wheels program is essential for a lot of seniors. Um, a lot so from the congregate side because allowing them to come into a center where they can uh, receive meals and get the social interaction. Um, also have activities at the center is extremely important because we all know that that social interaction is part of maintaining a healthy lifestyle. So we encourage seniors to come into the centers. For the homebound, it's critical. Uh, we have seniors that, I mean, by definition of the word, are homebound. They don't drive, they can't get out, they don't have family in the area. So without this meal, they would not eat. And this is the one nutritious meal that we can provide for them that will give them the caloric and the vitamin intake that they need on a daily basis. How's the weather going to be tomorrow? Good. Good. All right. Thanks for that, girl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, mentally, for the homebound seniors, it's it's important because a lot of times the driver that they see is the only interaction that they have. So they learn to count on that senior being here. Um, a lot of times that is the only human contact they will have. Uh, it's also a way on our end of it where, the, where our driver comes in daily to make sure that, um, that they're physically okay, um, that they haven't fallen. When we have come into seniors and find them fallen and broken their hip and it's been 24 hours since they fell because the driver hasn't been there. And it's very sad, but um, it's at least someone contacting them or, or touching base with them on a daily basis to make sure of not only their uh, nutritional um, uh, requirements and needs, but also their um, physical and emotional needs. So I used to cook big meals, have the whole family over and everything, and uh, but uh, I don't know, I just don't, in the last few years, I just haven't got the stamina that I, used to have and it just has been a real help to us to depend on meals on wheels. I don't have to go to the store too much. I get in one of those little carts and I've got arthritis in my knees and so it's hard for me to get around and 
it's really been it's a really lifesaver really for for me because mm -hmm. I'm trying to be a caregiver and handle the home and everything. It is it's, it's helped me a lot. And Hello, Brenda is a very cheerful person, and it's good to see her every morning and uh, mm -hmm. and. We some mornings and some days we don't have anybody, and so it's just just a hello and and somebody who has come into our life. You do get an attachment to seniors. We have seniors that have been on the program for as long as I've been here, some even longer, um, and it's just very gratifying to go in and see them and and remember that you know they have little dogs or you know maybe their families down south or. Um, you know, they have some quirk or some nuance that you can remember and talk to them about something that means something to them. And again, it's just having that interaction with them. Sometimes she just sits there with the door open because she knows the time. I told her I might be late today. So I usually blow my horn for her so that she'll know I'm here. But you do get very, the drivers get very attached to their driver or to their, uh, home delivery because they see them every single day so it's it's almost like a sibling or a grandparent. I it's like my own family to me you know I think I've been with a lot of these people for around four years and um, it's real touching. What I get out of it is the fulfillment of knowing that um, we're helping seniors in this community that need the help and without this program, um, as I've said before, could possibly um, not eat through the course of the day. Um, it's, it's a great satisfaction to visit these seniors and have them just um, speak wonders of the program and tell you um, how important it is to them and they don't know what they'd do without it. And uh, just to see the gratification and the thankfulness on their faces and know that um, government's working in the way that government should be working and helping those people that are out there that need it. Brenda Acosta and her co-workers serve meals to over a thousand homebound seniors every day. Virtually every county in America is forced to deal with gang violence and crime. Here in Kern County, our Sheriff's Department has a gang suppression unit whose sole purpose is to reduce gang violence. These gentlemen and ladies put their lives on the line in some of the worst neighborhoods in the county. Here's a look at a department that walks the line every day. We have different areas in Kern County that gang members literally run to where citizens are afraid to go outside after dark. And we're doing everything we can to curtail that. We've got over a thousand documented gangs in Kern County almost 7,000 documented gang members. We're seeing everything from petty theft to stolen vehicles to uh, concealed weapons charges to narcotics is the big thing. Pretty much all gangs have a background or a common ground with narcotics, either selling, trafficking, use, that type of thing. Uh, they're, they're involved in, if you name it, they're in, gang members are involved in pretty much any illegal enterprise you can think of. The importance of the gang suppression unit is number one, give the, uh, the citizens a sense of security. Know that uh, law enforcement in Kern County is not going to tolerate gang violence. In just the short time that we've increased our manpower on the gang unit, uh, I think we've done uh, a real good job in enhancing that sense of security because we can't go to dinner, and I mean as a unit, we can't go to 
dinner a night without somebody coming up and saying, thank you, I love what's going on. For me, the best part of being in this unit is the, the people that I work with. Uh, I've, and I mean both the, the day shift, our investigative side and our street enforcement uh, section, they are a bunch of totally dedicated uh, men and women that believe 100% what they're doing. Some of the gangs we're dealing with in Kern County and you'll see later tonight are uh, Stroller Boy Crips, Country Boy Crips, East Side Crips, West Side Crips. Uh, our unit doesn't deal that much with blood sex that's predominantly a city uh, gang, but we have seen some of them in the county areas. Hispanic gangs, we've got Colonia Bakers, we've got Gage Street Locos, Loma Bakers, Lomita Bakers, Brown Pride, uh, Southside Bakers, Rexham Parquet. So I think some of it's hard to read, but yeah, ES for East Side Bakers, which is a criminal street gang, uh, primarily tagger oriented. And that's the moniker aspect of BKS, which is Bakersville Bakers. Uh, all the gangs, are, Hispanic gangs, all say Bakers is where they're from, and that's just a generic term. Uh, most of these are monikers. Uh, SUR, you know, that's for uh, S-U-R-S for Southerner, you know, that's like a Southern Hispanic gang thing. You side Baker, so when people say it's not a gang, you know, sometimes they'll try to say it's not a gang. There, there it is, you side Baker, so I mean, that's, 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 that's a gang, it's something, you know what I mean? Then you have different sets of it, but uh, Colonia, Vario, those are their regular own gangs, even though they're on the east side of town. So, um, east side Baker's is a different clique. There is no place that you can go and not be affected or find gang members. Anyway, there, there's nowhere in Kirk County that I can think of off the top of my head that does not have a gang presence or a gang presence. We're going over to our, well, what we call a south side. That's unfortunately we get in, we get into the habit to where we use the gang names, and we really don't want to do that because then it's giving them, for lack of a better word, giving them credence. The worst part is to see what different gangs and gang members have done to various areas of this county. We've got beautiful areas. You can drive down parts of uh, some real nice middle class areas, see some very nice homes, and less than a block away, uh, you see graffiti, gang graffiti on the walls. The gangs really don't care about who they hurt or what's going on. I mean, the families are very much affected. The families of the gang members. You don't get into this line of work, I'll be honest with you, without being scared. But the difference between somebody that is scared and somebody that can control the fear and still function is, at times can be the difference between, honestly, life or death. The uh, deputies assigned to the, the gang suppression unit, they ride by themselves and that's what we're expected to contact people. If you don't go out and contact anybody, then you're not doing your job. I don't want to run after you, and you look like you can run pretty fast. Oh, no. Why would I run, though, really? Well, I don't know. Self-motivation is a biggie. Number two is you have to be what we consider confident. We're, you're not responding to calls for service. 
so we expect you to go out and do your job. Uh, I don't want to say that they're, they're self-supervised because obviously I'm a, I'm a supervisor, but they have to be competent to the point where they're sure of their courses of action. What you got on the police station? Some on the front. Yeah. What is important? Thug life. They have to be able to talk to people. You have to be personable, and sometimes you have to be personable in unpleasant situations because a lot of our information we get from gang members. Well, do you be cool with me taking you down to the Oki? Drop you off in the Oki. Say, hey, what's up? Why are you going to talk? I can bring you back. I ain't gonna bring you back. Well, 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 would you be okay down there? Yeah. Sure. Ain't got no problem with the Oki? No? A lot of the gang members know that uh, if they see us or even the city gang unit, we're serious about what we do. We're not going to let anything happen while we're out there. And if things do start happening, we're going to come down on them hard. Sergeant Maynard and his gang suppression unit are growing in numbers and hope to be fully staffed by the end of the year. If you're interested in finding out more on these segments or other departments within Kern County, go to www.co.kern.ca.us. For myself, the crew, and KGov, we hope you've enjoyed this look inside Kern.